Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May be seated now to listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion, a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send, send out your spirit and, and renew the face of the earth. earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. They all look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Lord, Lord send, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Pleasing to him, be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. 
There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God. The same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person he wishes. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, also in Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. We are all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to believe. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. When I was first ordained a priest, I had a, a, a 7 a.m. Sunday Mass. And so I get up, get ready for the 7 a.m. Sunday Mass. And I think it's probably pretty weird, so I don't do it, is when I get up in the morning, I don't start speaking to myself out loud. So I got up that Sunday morning, and I didn't know that I had lost my voice. So I go over to the church, and I'm getting ready. And all of a sudden, right before Mass starts, I'm realizing... Louder than this. I was like, oh, well, it's too late. What am I going to do? So I just, I did what I, I just did with you is I just told everybody I lost my voice, so I'm not going to preach a homily. And I did the whole mass like that. We had uh, a woman who was the sacristan, you know, who sets up for mass and cleans up afterward. And the first time I met that woman, I thought she was trying to be funny or sarcastic. 
because she was so kind and so friendly and so complimentary. I'm kind of cynical in my head. I was like, is this woman for real? Is she putting me on? But she really was. She was always this wonderful, complimentary, positive person. And she came up to me after mass, after I had celebrated mass like this for an hour. And I'm thinking, well, what is she gonna say this time? And she comes up to me and she says, Father, mass was so beautiful this morning. It reminded me of what it must have been like when the Christians had to pray in secret. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's pretty good. She was able to find a compliment out of probably one of the worst masses I've ever done in my whole life. She still found a compliment. But she was, she was calling to mind a truth of our history as Christians, which is at different times and in different places, Christians worshiped in secret. Catholics had to have mass in secret because if they were discovered, they would be killed. Not only in the time of the Roman Empire, in places in Asia and Japan and in China, at different times in countries in Africa, at different times in Ireland, Catholics had to have mass in secret and they were risking their life because they were celebrating Mass. We're in a very crazy time now where we're celebrating Mass and Confirmation outside because we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're wearing masks and we're socially distancing and we have to go through all these procedures that make it more difficult for us to practice our faith. And the beauty of it is that can be a terrible thing, or it can be something that strengthens our faith. So that you're going through more today to get confirmed than any other classes in the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years have had to go through. This is more awkward, more inconvenient, and more bizarre. I'm hoping that someday you who are getting confirmed will be sitting with your own children or your grandchildren and they're getting ready for their confirmation and you'll sit down and you'll say, well, you know, when I was confirmed, we had to do it outside in the lawn in the courtyard and we had to wear masks because there was a pandemic. And your child or grandchild will say, seriously? That's weird, I never heard about that because of course they won't pay attention in history class. So they won't realize what we're going through now. And it'll strike them as really bizarre. Boy, that was a different time. Was it prayerful? Or how do you receive communion when you're wearing a mask? And how do you offer the sign of peace when you have to stay far away from each other? And you'll be able to share. Well, you know, it was different. And it was strange. But it was still a sacrament. And I still wanted to be initiated fully into the Catholic Church. And I really wanted and I needed those gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they were given to me. And then I gave them to you. Or I tried to pass that on to your parents. And that's why you, my grandchild, that's why you're getting ready for your confirmation. And it's passed down all from the time of Jesus. And from the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came in order to ensure that the church would always exist. And the church will always exist until the end of time. And this church will either be here with you or it will be here for you. Either way, the church isn't going anywhere. And what I mean when I say the church will be here with you it will be here with you if you are coming back and volunteering to be a confirmation leader or an altar server or a lector, or even if you're not doing any ministries, that you're here every weekend and you're praying and you're receiving the Eucharist and asking for forgiveness for your sins and you're contributing in the collection so that you help facilitate the ministries of the church and the outreach to the poor and the suffering. So, if that's true of you, then the church will be here with you. Or, it might not be true. 
It might be that the church will be here for you. And what that means is, we don't see you very often. Or you're not feeling real connected to your faith or to God or to your church. So you don't come to Mass very often, and you don't volunteer. And maybe we won't see you until the day you get married. And then you'll think, you know, I really want my marriage to last, so so I want to get married in the Catholic Church. Maybe it's time for us to, to go back to church. Or maybe we won't see you, and a terrible thing will happen, is that your mother or your father or your grandparents will get sick or get diagnosed with cancer, and they'll pass away. And then we'll come back to church for that funeral. And we'll come together and we'll pray, and we'll do the best we can to offer comfort to you in your grief. And when we do that, I can promise you this. We won't say to you, well, where have you been for the last five years? Where have you been for the last ten years? You haven't been here at Mass, so I'm not sure if we can do this funeral for you. You're not one of our registered parishioners. What I can tell you is no one's going to say anything like that. What they're going to say is, are you okay? How can we help you? Let's pray together for that grandmother, grandfather that you loved. Let's let's remember them and celebrate their life. That's what we'll do when we're here for you. Or it might be a circumstance like like the several young people who sometimes are on our property at night who are homeless. The young couple who rings the doorbell and asks for some water, some food, needs a gift card for some groceries. We need to make some phone calls. Might be like the older man who come, came the other day because we allow, he's homeless, and we allow his mail to be delivered here at the church. And so he rings the doorbell and he literally has tears in his eyes and says, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry that I'm bothering you, but, but I'm supposed to be getting a package with my, with my EBT, with my food stamp card, so I can get some food. And, you know, I, keep, I hate, I'm so sorry to bother you. And he's literally crying, and I'm just saying, it's okay. That's fine. He doesn't come to Mass here as far as I know. I don't know if he's a Catholic. But we're here for him. And he doesn't have to feel guilty if that's what he needs. There was a young man who came, also found himself on the streets, had his wallet stolen and his phone stolen, and he was just trying to get a hold of his mom, who lived down in Southern California. And so he said he knew she was on Facebook. So he rang the doorbell, and I took out my phone, and we're looking on Facebook and scrolling down because there's a lot of people with the same name. And finally we found her. There she is. So I, I message, message her on Facebook Messenger. I take a picture of her son and say, you know, your son is here. He's on the streets, but he's okay. He can stay here at the church, and he's got some food, and, you know, he's just trying to get a hold of you. She messages back, I, I can't talk until after 5 o'clock, and eventually they're, they're texting with each other. And She's able to drive up three hours from Southern California and pick him up, and during that time he's able to stay here at the church and make sure he can use the restroom. And So we're here for him, and that's okay. And he's not a parishioner. He doesn't come to church here. He was baptized Catholic. He was confirmed, and part of our discussion was, what happened? And he asked me that, like, how did, why is this happening to me? And I never thought I'd be in this situation. And it was because he made a lot of small decisions that didn't keep him close to God in his life, that didn't allow him to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm hoping, because he certainly was talking about it, that's, that's what happens in times of crisis, is, is that we can reconnect with God. So the church was here for him. This church will always be here. I prefer that we're here with you and that you're one of those people who help us feed the hungry on Friday nights, teach confirmation to new generations of Catholics, drop a little money in the collection plate, and you don't realize your impact as a young person, if you don't do any of those things because you can't, because you're too busy, but you just come to Mass, Everyone notices young people at Mass, and it gives older generations hope, and it makes us feel blessed, 
And it makes us feel confident in the future of the church because we can see young, talented, blessed people who are here with us. Because each of you has a unique gift of the Holy Spirit. We, we heard in the readings those gifts of wisdom, counsel, knowledge, piety and fear of the Lord, fortitude, courage. And it might be hard to believe But each one of you is uniquely blessed and gifted in a way that no other person is. No other person can offer to the church in the service of God what you are able to offer. And that's why it's such a a wonderful thing when we're here with you. If it doesn't work out now or for a while, we promise and commit we will be here for you. So if it's you who find yourself homeless on the street, or if someday, God forbid, your children do, your children are that way, or maybe their grandchildren, or their great-great-grandchildren that they'll still have in their mind, go to, the, go to the church, they'll help you. I don't know the name, go to the church, they'll help you. So that, that we will be here for that reason. But you have those gifts, those blessings that we heard in that second reading. And in the first reading, when it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the Spirit of the Lord didn't come upon the prophet. And the Spirit of the Lord doesn't come upon us because we're so wonderful and holy. And that it's a reward for us. Or that it's a spotlight on us to show other people how great we are. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to announce a year of favor for the Lord. I'm called to do something with the gift that I've been given. I'm called to serve and care for others. That's all of us in our own way. The gifts of the Spirit are for others, never just for us. Never just to make us feel good. And so we're preparing to in a few moments celebrate that sacred and special sacrament of confirmation where you are anointed with the sacred chrism and become fully initiated into your Catholic Christian faith. It's not a real complicated ritual. It's pretty simple and it's over pretty quickly because what happens externally is certainly much less important than what can happen to you internally in the grace of the sacrament and the power of the Spirit. So when you do come forward to be anointed, I'll use the sacred chrism. That's the oil blessed each year by the bishop. The chrism is the same oil that's used for ordination. It was used to anoint my hands at my priestly ordination. Um, It was used at your baptism. It's used now in your confirmation. It's a scented oil, a special scented oil. And the oil is the vehicle through which we ask for and receive this, this strength of the Spirit. So I'll make the sign of the cross on your forehead. I will say your name and I will say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will say, Amen. Amen. I believe. Let it be. That's what amen means. And then after that, I will say, and I will mean it, the Lord be with you. And you will respond to me, and I hope you will mean it, and with your spirit. And that's the sacrament. And then you'll return to your place as the volunteers help bring forward those people for for the the sacrament of, of confirmation. So as we prepare for that, we renew and profess our faith and we pray for the Spirit and the Spirit's gifts to come upon you. Please stand. Sometimes it's a little harder to hear when we're outside, and certainly it's harder to hear when we have masks on. So try to, hear, try to say in your best and strongest voice, 
Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Father Almighty, for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with abundant gifts, and through this anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Let us take a moment of silence to pray for those who are about to be confirmed. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, and give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time the volunteers will assist you in coming forward for your confirmation. Dimphna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Claire, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you.
Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Agnes, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you.